movement of the planet that uh, caused its North Pole to, its physical North Pole, to no longer point due north which it had been before, and it introduced these very strong seasons. And with that came this, uh, these ice packs that would uh, go over the North Pole primarily was the biggest change. And the northern, he- northern part of the Northern Hemisphere, and then for reasons that are not clear, after 100,000 or so years, something would change and the ice would melt. And we know this happens, and we know it's happened many times, that this planet has been going back and forth between ice ages time and time again since then. And these interglacials last about 15,000 years. And then the ice returns. We are at the present time at the end of a 15,000-year interglacial. And just as has happened in the past, there is a rise in carbon dioxide and methane in the atmosphere. There's actually much more methane in the atmosphere right now than there has been before and carbon dioxide. So something may change this time. It may be that the cycle will be interrupted by a massive warming event, and this event won't end until something changes on the planet that causes less carbon dioxide to be and methane to be released. And very frankly, that would be a huge reduction in the human population, which could be in the offing. And I hope not. You're right. You know, again, with Antarctica, you know, melting away, methane gas is coming up like you wouldn't believe. I mean, you can't just blame the cows for it. You know, some scientists, oh, it's the cows. Look what's going on in the tundra in Canada, uh, the Antarctica. All that methane gas is pouring out. Uh, absolutely. And methane is a very efficient uh, heat. It, 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 it holds in heat very efficiently. But it also doesn't last very long. And I think that this is one of the reasons the superstorm scenario is real. Uh, in other words... Once the methane source is, ceases, and there's no more methane entering the atmosphere, it only takes it 30 or 40 years to, to, disin- to, to dissipate. It, it, uh, it changes into two other gases, and benign gases, and uh, this would happen. And when this does happen, then suddenly the atmosphere is no longer retaining all of that heat and there's nothing producing the heat either and we go into a very cold period and that a new ice age begins yeah it doesn't take much to begin one of these ice ages well right now is aren't we going into it isn't the sun starting to go into a hibernation uh, state where the sun spots well it is yeah It, it, it is and how deep that will go i don't know right now it's not very deep but you know, we it just went into a state like that, and ca- or rather came out of a state like that in the late 19th century, when from the 13th through the 19th century, things were much colder, much colder than they are now. And if it goes back into a, uh, into a hibernation state, it might be good for us, because it might stave off this heat event that seems to be in the offing. And if that happens, then, you know, we should be very g- grateful. Um, uh, so, uh, and maybe that will happen. I don't know. Well, I just, you know, so, so, so many unknowns, but here's one good thing. We, as I was saying, we were really scorned at the beginning, but now some of the top clim- climate scientists in the world all banded together, 11 of them, and wrote this hugely important paper a couple of years ago called essentially called the superstorm is real. And I was very glad when it happened because Art was still fine then and he got to know about it. And he was was really kind of depressed about what had happened and how many of his own listeners were against the superstorm book uh, because of 
the 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 belief that that people want to have that it's just not happening when in fact that's not the case well you know very well you know al gore for years try to tell everybody what would happen he got ridiculed one end to the other and then you have these scientists for you have two camps one of them will say we're going to go into this whatever and then you had another one no it's not it's like i remember my grandfather before he passed on, he would just sit in his chair and read books about World War II. And if you come out and, and come and visit him and you say, boy, it's a beautiful day. He would say, no, it's cold and it's about ready to rain. In denial. Yeah. Uh, and that's what is going on. I mean, the last mini ice age, the Thames River in in England was frozen solid. It, it, people forgetting what happened in Russia at the turn of the century were thousands of russians froze to death in their own houses because they couldn't get warm right right well that happens still in the world but it right now it looks like a very different picture i think we're going to have an extremely hot summer in the northern hemisphere and um i think that there's going to be a lot of weather disruption and i'm not so sure it's all that clear exactly what is happening because we we're getting into a situation where um it's chaotic in other words it it, it i don't think it's actually predictable at this point in time i don't think personally so. i think it's i think it is uh i think that it's there's just there are just too many unknowns so um We'll just have to see what happens. But one thing is true. There is going to be a lot of change. I think the storms, you don't have to go into a, a mini ice age. You could just, the storms, like hurricanes, can just go big, huge, and take out huge areas. You could have, well, again, with the Earth's magnetic uh, uh, field shifting as the way it is right now, you get a bunch of scientists there. One will say, well, maybe a huge 800-mile-an-hour winds will come crashing through. Then you get another group, oh, nothing's going to happen. Uh, we, we don't know. I, the bad thing is we could, me and you, could live through it, or at least to the start of it. Well, listen, I think mostly of my kids and my grandkids. And, I, you know, people who, who scorn this and laugh at it, either they don't care about their children or they don't have children because... Uh, it's it's very disturbing, the whole thing. I have eight children, and all of them, except for two of them, have like three, four, five, seven kids. We got a huge family, and I oh tell you, oh my god, you sure do. And I think of them, you know, when I think about the the future, what it could be like, and it's scary because again, we're looking at the. Uh, from the equator going up to up the UK up around out, out out there it is slowing down so i predicted on my show here back 6 months ago england is going to have probably the worst winter than many years and i got a funny feeling it's going to happen oh yeah i think it is happening in england and i think that they're going to probably have also an extremely hot summer a hot dry summer all over europe Followed by more very disruptive weather in the win- in the winters. Oh yeah, it's going to become much more extreme. So right, just look at was it about two weeks ago? The uh, Antarctica almost broke seventy degrees. Right, sixty eight degrees, and that's a <laughs> that's a really really bad sign. It's scary. And then this oh, past, this past summer. A place in Alaska hit 90-something degrees when it yes. never has ever hit over 40 degrees. Even here where I'm at, down at uh, Gig Harbor, Washington, that two years ago, in the month of, uh, was it April? In April, we hit 90-something degrees for one day. We went from 30 degrees to 90 and then back down to 50. It was crazy. Yeah, it's very scary. And I mean, I can see, I don't know about your weather pattern, but I can see the weather pattern here is totally changed from when I was a kid. I remember 
in my area what summer was like, what winter was like. It's not anywhere like it was. It's not even predictable anymore. Not at all. No, I agree with you completely. It's not not predictable. And I, you know, I'm living in Southern California, so I I have to say that I have only been here for about ten years. So it, the weather seems pretty much on a par with what it always is. There's going to be a big drought, almost certainly, starting now, and that will mean that that there will be fires again soon because there was a lot of rain in the fall and the, th- this is a place that's evolved to burn and the result is when it rains all the plants just go bursting out and you can almost watch them grow they grow so fast and then then uh, soon something comes al- uh, it dries out and the next thing you know, there's a lightning strike, or nowadays power lines go down in the wind, and there's a huge fire. And in the old days, there was nobody there, but now that's not true. So, you know, it's a very scary. I had seven friends lose their homes in Malibu uh, in the last fire that was up there. So it's scary, scary times. It, it, it is. My, my daughter, my oldest daughter, lives in Hemet, California. And, you know, I would up to, it's been about three years since I did, but I go up, you know, from, well, Tacoma, Washington, go the back way to Reno. Then I go to Pahrump, then Las Vegas, and then I go up to Hemet, California and see my daughter because they just bought a house there a couple of years ago. And the, for, I'm used to luscious green trees because we got a lot of rain here in Pacific Northwest. I, I get into where she lives and I, I know, first thing I noticed, they had no grass in their front yard. And then I go in and I talk to them and they, they say, Hey, when you see the backyard, it was all dirt. And I said, why don't you have grass? We can't afford to water it. Uh, wow. Well, that'll happen. I mean, it, it, you know, it, in here, in this area, I, I have a friend who is in the business of building water to salin, salt water desalinization plants. And his company is just working 24 hours a day up and down the whole west coast building these plants for these cities which know that they will need them interesting now hey uh whitley whitley we need to take a two-minute break uh i'm going to put you on hold we'll be back okay with whitney and we're going to be talking a little bit more about the coming global superstorm what is going on and then i want to shift over to his new book again uh a new world so stay tuned you're listening to me gary on Night Dreams Talk Radio. You thirst for some significance of the both dimensional kind. You enter a realm of spirit of sight. 